Hi, I'm Benjamin Kroll, and in this video I'm going to show you some basics of soldering and use that to show you how to make your own banana plug cables. So this is what's called a banana plug cable. That's the banana plug connector. Typical use of that would be to go in this magnet. And before the COVID-19 epidemic, uh, we just always had these cables around the lab at school and I had no idea how much they cost. Uh, then we started putting together our kits for students to use at home for, uh, for labs during the quarantines and I found out these are really expensive. Uh, you can't get them for less than about five bucks a piece even if you are going to buy a big quantity. Uh, so when we started pricing that out, thinking about sending each student about eight cables, that was just eating up too much of our budget. So what uh, I think we're going to do is uh, send, send you our parts and a soldering iron and have you make your own. And so soldering is actually kind of a good skill to have anyway. So you know, this video is going to be my attempt to show you how to do that. This is a soldering iron. You can see the LED is on. That's because it's plugged in. And it's got a temperature control, which is currently set on... I guess you can't see because of the bad focus, but it's currently set on about 375 degrees, which uh, by trial and error I found was about the right temperature for this job. This is some solder. It says on the label that it's 60% tin, 40% lead. And the idea of soldering is it's different from welding. In welding you melt the metal itself of the part that you're joining, whereas with soldering you melt the solder onto the part and it fills in and sticks it together. Here are my tools. I've got this little stand that came with the soldering iron so that I can put it down on the desk without burning anything. Uh, I've also got the core of the soldering iron under a book so that the iron can't fall off into my lap. My solder. This is a, a little scrap of sponge that I got wet for cleaning the tip of the iron and uh, getting crud off of it. This is a banana plug connector with a plastic housing on it and this is a, a pair of wire strippers which uh, I think we are going to include in the kit for you to use. If you don't have a pair of wire, wire cutters then it's a little bit more of a pain to strip the insulation off the end of a wire but you can do it with a razor blade or an exacto. Here's a spool of 18 gauge wire. Uh, I found that 18 gauge was a little bit skinny for this uh, purpose for use with these connectors so we'll probably send you 14 gauge wire but it'll be similar and you can see that I've already put one connector on one end so now I'm going to make a, a cable about that long and I'm going to show you how I put the connector on the other end I'm going to use the cutting part of the strippers then on the strippers it has numbers I'm going to find 18 which is right here and I'm going to strip about three millimeters worth of the wire off of the end because that was what I found was about right so I put it in the hole that says 18 and that hole is only tight enough to cut off the insulation itself not cut through the wire so when I do that it gives me a nice clean end of the wire these connectors have a metal part and a plastic part and there's a screw and also a hole right here and what I found was that I couldn't get this to work with this diameter of wire unless I took off the plastic part so I've got to remove the screw you can actually get this screw off with your thumbnail or something but if you've got a Phillips screwdriver that's better and then especially if you're doing it with a thumbnail you want to make sure that before you finish taking off the screw, something's going to catch it. Otherwise, it'll fall down at your feet on the floor and you'll be down on your hands and knees searching for it. So I'm putting this glasses case here underneath to catch the screw. And now I can take off the plastic. Now that we've got the plastic off, you can see that this has a hole here which is a, a female connector in case you want to connect another Vanna plug connector to this one 
and then up above there's a cup and the cup has a screw hole in it and so you're meant to stick the wire in to that cup and then screw the screw in the hole in order to hold it there and you can do it without solder but it won't be a very reliable connector to get things a little more tight and solid here with this small uh, gauge wire uh, I found it was kind of helpful to get some aluminum foil and wrap it up into a little pill just like that I'm going to stuff that into the cup not on the side with the screw but on the bottom side away from the screw so it doesn't get in the way of the electrical connection but it helps to fill up the space and make the wire fit in there more snugly now I'm going to shove the wire in on top of my aluminum foil filler so now that just stays like that and then I'm going to get the screw and screw it in the hole Screw that screw down tight enough so it feels pretty snug mechanically, but not tight enough so that it'll damage the wire or anything. So now I could use that, and it would probably be good enough, but after a little bit of use, it would probably fall apart, and it also might not make reliable electrical contact. So that's why I'm going to solder it now. So if you go in someone's shop, like in their garage, if they do a lot of this kind of stuff, uh, you'll see that they have uh, things like little clamps and hands-free pliers for this purpose. Since I don't own any of that specialized stuff, I just took this stapler and some scotch tape and that's going to hold that wire and then, also to keep it from moving around, I'm going to put this screwdriver right behind it. And that way I can kind of press on it a little bit in this direction and it won't run away from me. Now my soldering skills are not super, super great, but I'll try to show you what I understand about the technique. So I clean any crud off of the end of the soldering iron using the wet sponge then I'm going to put just a little dab of solder on the end that verifies that the soldering iron is actually hot the temperature I set at 375 Celsius which I found out seemed to work pretty well for this project and next I'm just going to touch the soldering iron to my piece and put a little bit of solder on there and watch that it melts on there and right now all I'm trying to do is get enough liquid solder on there so that there's good thermal contact between the tip of the soldering iron and my piece once I do that then the piece will start to heat up really well once I've done that I don't want the tip of the soldering iron necessarily to melt the solder I want the hot metal of my piece itself to melt the solder that's why you'll see me feeding in the solder actually from the other side of the wire because I want to make sure that wire is nice and hot then when the solder goes on I know that wire is so nice and hot that the solder will flow into the wire and into all the cracks and connect really well and so you can see I used up a lot of solder there uh, it's pretty much filled a significant amount of the volume of that cup and that way I think I have pretty good electrical contact and it will also help to make it a strong mechanical piece. Okay now I've turned off the soldering iron for safety. I can still kind of feel the heat coming off of it though so it's still quite hot. Putting it aside and I've got a weight sitting on the cord so it won't fall on my lap. And also my 
wire is still hot. So I'm going to only handle it by the insulation. I'm not touching the middle part yet. And so I think I have a good wire here, but I want to test it and make sure that it really is uh, going to make a good electrical connection. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer for the hot uh, connector that I just soldered to cool down. And then I'm going to show you how to test that. So now I think this is cooled off enough. I'm going to find out. Touching the far end first. It's not too hot. Seems okay. And so this is the meter that we're planning to send out to our students at Fullerton College with their kit. And it has a whole bunch of functions which are selected by this rotary knob. It's in the off position right now. The function I'm going to use is the continuity tester, which is that yellow thing there with an icon that looks like a speaker. That's because it's an audible tester. So I turn the rotary knob to that position. And now I, I'm going to make sure the meter actually works by using it with a cable that I'm pretty sure is a known good cable. So I'm going to plug it into this black plug that says COM underneath. That's called the common plug because no matter what operation we're doing on this meter, it has all these different functions, we always use the common plug. Then for the other plug, I'm going to plug it into uh, this one that says volts, ohms, and milliamps. So that one right there. And as soon as I plug it in, you hear a sound. And that's good. That tells you that this cable really is a good electrical con connector. It's not broken anywhere. Now let's try it with the brand new cable we've just made. One plug in the common. It's a little bit tight. One in there. And it tests out good. One other thing I'll show you that I probably should have done first here. Uh, if you look at this banana plug connector, you can see that it's got these puffy uh, springs here, they're like leaf springs, and when those go into the female connector, they compress and make a good tight fit and a solid electrical connection. These particular uh, connectors from this supplier, they, they come from the supplier pretty puffed out and they're quite hard to get in. I'll show you that. So here I've got this connector fresh out of the box and I've got a female connector on this uh, alligator clip, which is also one of the things we'll be sending you in the kit. And if I try to shove that in there, I think you can tell that I'm making quite a bit of physical effort to get that in there. And it's really not great if you're having to do this on the ones that you've just soldered. Because those solder connections, even if you're the world's greatest solderer like I am, you could end up damaging that connection. So see how I've done this four or five times now? It's starting to wear in a little bit, so it's easier to get in. If you want, you can also try mashing these down a little bit with some, some pliers. So the end of these wire cutters is a pair of pliers up at the very tips here. And so I can do this kind of thing. This just might be too easy to overdo though, because if you mash it down too much, then it'll be a loose connector from then on, and you'll never be able to make solid electrical contact with it. But I'm going to try this and see how well it works. So now shoving that in there, that's actually pretty good. That feels like it's making a good contact, but it's easy to get in and out. So maybe by now you've been following along with the video and trying this out for yourself. Uh, I hope you've been successful and made yourself a nice cable with a good connection on it. And who knows, maybe someday you won't remember anything about your uh, college physics professor except that he's the guy who taught you how to solder.